Hello friends, in this video let us discuss electronic science paper which was conducted by UGC NET. In this video I am going to discuss 50 questions. All questions were MCQ based questions. Each question carried 2 marks and all the questions were compulsory. Starting with first question what they are given is the threshold voltage of an N channel MOSFET can be increased by. We know that in the case of N channel MOSFET nothing but you have to consider N MOS. In the case of N MOS the substrate what you are going to take is you are going to consider P type substrate which is lightly doped and the source and drain terminal is made up of N plus. Source is made up of N plus which is heavily doped and even drain is also heavily doped both are N type. In between to this you will be having a thin oxide and a polysilicon and this terminal you are going to call it as a gate terminal. The fourth terminal is bulk or substrate you are going to connect to a least potential let me assume to be ground. So what you have to do is initially you will be having holes at this region at this channel region. So you have to invert the channel nothing but you have to replace holes by electron. So what is the voltage you are going to apply at this terminal is that voltage is VGS. So the minimum voltage that is required for channel inversion is called as threshold voltage. Able to follow? So in order to increase this threshold voltage what you have to do is you have to increase the doping concentration of P type. So option A is correct nothing but increasing the channel doping concentration. Moving on to second question what they are given is the Temenian's equivalent circuit across AB is. Now if you are having a bulk circuit what is the equivalent Temenian's circuit is you will be having a Temenian's voltage or open circuit voltage and in series to this you will be having a Temenian's impedance or Temenian's resistance you are going to call it as RTH. These two things are connected in series. Here you are going to connect a load impedance. Now what is this voltage? Let me consider this voltage as VAB which is same as your Temenian's voltage. So how I am going to calculate this VAB means you can make use of nodal analysis or you can solve using superposition theorem. So let me solve using superposition theorem. In the case of superposition theorem if you are considering one source then all the remaining voltage source you have to treat it as a short circuit and all the remaining current source you have to treat it as an open circuit nothing but a remaining sources you have to deactivate. So how I can solve is this VAB equals to 6 times of this resistance value is 2 divided by total impedance is 4 plus let me consider 12 volts into into 2 divided by 4. So I will be getting 9 volts. So I am getting VAB or VTH which is equals to 9 volts. Hence option B is going to follow. Now I need to calculate what is the value of RTH. So in order to calculate this RTH what is the equivalent value is all the voltage source need to be treated as short circuit and all the current source need to be treated as an open circuit. Now looking at this end how this 2 ohm and 2 ohm is connected means it is connected in parallel. What is the equivalent value of 2 in parallel with 2 which is equals to 1 ohm hence option B is correct. Moving on to third question what they are given is the input to the differentiator is minus 5 volt what is the output. Now look at over here if I am writing differentiation of some constant I will be getting 0 volts. Similarly differentiation of a constant value nothing but minus 5 volts is a DC value so I will be getting 0 volts hence option B is going to follow. Fourth question is based on successive approximation register type. In the case of successive approximation converter input to the comparator is through we know that input to the comparator is through digital to analog converter or DAC. Fifth question is based on microprocessor 8086. What they are given is the assembler directive used to give name to some value or symbol in the case of 8086 is if you are declaring a variable as 8 bit then you are going to declare it as DD. If you want a variable to be of 16 bit then you are going to declare it as DW. If you want to declare some temporary variables then you are going to make use of equate or EQV. If you want to declare a procedure at the time you are going to make use of proc and if it is near or far then you have to define explicitly as name of the procedure followed by PROC followed by near or far you have to declare then you have to write the procedure body at last how you are going to terminate is you are going to write end P. 
Moving on to sixth question, what they are given is which one of the following is not an infinite loop? Now, what they are given is they have initialized i equals to 1 while of 1. While of 1 means always the condition is true. Inside the loop, what you are going to do is you are going to increment the value of i. This loop is an infinite loop. So, option A is not correct. For again, you know, what you have defined is for of do nothing, nothing but it is going to execute infinite number of times. Option B is also incorrect. What does option C says is you are initializing t equals to 0 while of t, nothing but while of 0. The condition is getting false, then the control is getting terminated. The loop is not even executed even once. So, option C is correct. Option D, what it is saying is, hint y, x equals to 0, they are making use of do y, do. What I am going to do is, y equals to 0, nothing but I am initializing y equals to 0, while of x equals to 0, is x equals to 0, yes, right, again you need to execute. So, this loop is going to execute infinite number of times, hence option D is also incorrect. Please remember, while loop and for loop is an entry controlled loop. Whereas, do while is not an entry controlled loop. Seventh question, in a two cavity kilstron, the secondary cavity is made up of catcher and the primary cavity is made up of buncher. In the case of FM, now look at over here, the moderating frequency, let me call it as FM and the carrier frequency, what you are going to do is, you will be having two carrier frequency, let me call it as FC1 and FC2, where FC1 is a high frequency component and FC2 is comparatively a low frequency component. If my message signal is of high value, then what you are going to do is, you are going to modulate it by a carrier component that is FC1. If my message is a low signal value, then you are going to modulate by a frequency that is FC2. So, in the case of FM, your carrier is never becoming zero, right? Ninth question is based on power electronics. What the argument is? In thyristor, di by dt failure is prevented by. We know that in the case of SCR, we will be having three types of production. The first one is snubber circuit and the second one is di by dt production and the third one is dv by dt production. Di by dt production is also called as over current production and dv by dt is also called as over voltage production. So in the case of di by dt production, we are going to make use of inductor so that sudden change in current is not getting pumped into the device thereby you are going to protect the device. Similarly, in the case of dv by dt production, what you are going to do is you are going to make use of capacitor. Capacitors will not allow sudden change in voltage. Moving on to 10th question, what they have given is the driving point impedance z of s of a network as pole 0 plot as shown in the figure. If z of 0 equals to 3, then z of s. Nothing but they are asking the transfer function z of s. z of s, how I can define is k times of zeros I have to write over here and poles I have to write over here. How many zeros are there? I am having 1 0. It is situated at minus 3. Nothing but S minus of minus 3 which is equal to S plus 3 divided by. The pole location is at minus 1 plus or minus J1. So, how I can write is S square plus 2S plus 2. Able to follow? Now, the option that is going to follow is option B is correct here k value is 2. Able to follow? Moving on to 11th question, what they are given is the common emitter configuration is normally preferred because it provides first option what they are given is voltage gain, current gain, power gain and stability. We know that if you are making use of common emitter configuration, it is going to provide a voltage gain but with a phase shift of 180 degree. It is also going to provide a current gain and it is also going to provide a power gain also but if I am talking about Miller's effect, if I am talking about Miller's effect, common emitter configuration is going to suffer from Miller effect. Whereas, if I am considering common base configuration and common collector configuration, it is not going to suffer from Miller's effect. So, you can't guarantee for stability. Hence, statement 1, 2, 3 is correct. Nothing but option B is going to follow. Moving on to 12th question, what they are given is, an element between the two terminals of a network to which a connection can be made is called dash while the branches of the tree are called dash. I expect this answer in the comment section. 
Please put your valuable comments in the comment section. Thirteenth question. Consider the following statements regarding an RC phase shift oscillator. So in the case of RC phase shift oscillator, you will be having a common emitter configuration. To this, you are going to provide a feedback with the help of RC network. We know that in the case of common emitter configuration, it is going to provide a phase shift of 180 degree. So for oscillators, you require a positive feedback and the total phase shift should be equal to 360 degree or 0 degree. So in order to compensate for 360 degree, what my feedback is going to do is, it is going to provide a further phase shift of 180 degree and amplifier gain is negative. This is very very important. In the case of amplifier design, you are going to make use of negative feedback but in the case of oscillated design, you are going to make use of positive feedback. And phase shift introduced by the feedback is also 180 degree. Hence, statement 2 and 3 are correct. Hence, option B is going to follow. Moving on to 14th question, what the given is. First statement, gate is a combinational circuit. Yes, NAND gate is a combinational logic circuit. NOR gate is a combinational logic circuit. Basic gates are your combinational logic circuits. XOR, XOR is a combinational logic circuit. The logic circuit will be having one or multiple inputs, but it will be having a single output. Second statement what they are given is, JK flip-flop in toggle mode is not a combinational logic. This statement is true because JK flip-flop or the flip-flop itself is a sequential logic. In the case of sequential logic, you will be having memory and you will be having feedback also. Circuit is very much complex. Third statement what they are given is, master slave JK flip-flop suffers from race or condition, this statement is false. Counters are sequential circuits, this statement is true, nothing but 1, 2, 4 is correct, that is option B is going to follow. Fifteenth question what they are given is, which of the following peripherals provide IO facilities? First statement what they are given is, 8279, 8259, 8155 and 8255. We know that 8155 and 8255 is going to provide I.O. facilities. So option D is going to follow. In the case of 8086 microprocessor, if you want to interface with the outside world, nothing but if you want to interface with a stepper motor or a DC motor or an LED controller at the time, you are going to make use of IC8255. Moving on to 16th question, the three types of loops available in C program are for, while, do, while. We know that for and while is going to check for the condition and then if the condition is true, then only the statement corresponding to the loop is going to be executed. But in the case of do, while, first the statement will be executed once, then the condition will be checked. So what they are asking is, which loop do not operate without testing the condition even once. So the statement 1 and 2 is correct, nothing but for and while is correct, hence option B is going to follow. 17th question what they are given is, a pin diode cannot be used as, it cannot be used as mixer and detector, it can be used as a switch, hence the option that is going to be followed is option B is correct. 18th question is based on analog communication, what they are given is double sideband as two sidebands and single sideband as one. This statement is true. Double sideband as carrier and two sideband and single sideband will be having a single sideband. This statement is also true. But the statement three what they are telling is it will be having a carrier and two sidebands but SSB will be having without carrier and two different sidebands they are telling. So statement three is going to be false. The first statement what they are given is DSB will be having two sidebands and SSB will be having one. This one is with respect to double sideband suppressed carrier and single sideband suppressed carrier. Able to follow? So the suitable option that is going to follow is option A is correct. Nineteenth question, which of the following are bidirectional switches? We know that track and DAG is a bidirectional switches. In the case of track, you are going to make use of gate pulse in order to reduce the forward blocking voltage. The option that is going to follow is option B is correct. 20th question is based on transducers. Here we have to tell which one is not a linear one. We know that in the case of metals, metals follow highly linear T. Metals are highly linear whereas semiconductors are non-linear. So 
thermistor and thermocouple are non-linear when compared to IC sensor, hence option A is going to follow. 21st question is based on LED material. What they are given is, which one of the following is not an LED material? We know that silicon and silicon dioxide, you can't make use as an LED because silicon will be having four valence electrons and it is a semiconductor and it follows indirect band gap and silicon dioxide you can call it as a thin oxide it is used as insulator in the case of VLSH chip industry so the suitable option that is going to follow is option C is correct 22nd question which one of the following quantities cannot be measured with the help of all effect we know that all effect is used to find the type of semiconductor and carrier concentration since they are asking for cannot to be measured you need to opt for 2 and 3 nothing but option B is going to follow the hall voltage in the case of n type material it is negative and in the case of p type it is positive and in the case of metals it is approximately equals to 0 and it is a negative value Moving on to 23rd question, what they are given is which of the following are not the parts of AM super 80 rotor end receiver. We know that super 80 rotor end receiver consists of mixer, IF amplifier as well as loudspeaker also and it consists of demodulator also but it does not consist of de-emphasis network also it will not be consisting limiter circuit. So the suitable option that is going to follow is C option. You should be very much familiar with respect to the block diagram of super 80 rotor end receiver also you should be very much familiar with respect to what is the signal to noise ratio in the case of super 80 rotor end receiver why we are going for super 80 rotor end receivers only what is the advantage of super 80 rotor end receiver when compared to other receivers you should know moving on to 24th question what they are given is the following is true for the multi mode gradient index fiber first statement what they are given is the refractive index varies as a function of radial distance from the center Second statement, the refractive index undergoes sudden change at the cladding boundary. Third statement, what they are given is, it provides better bandwidth and data rate than the multi-mode step index. Fourth statement, what they are given is, it provides better bandwidth and data rate than single-mode step index. So this question is from optical fiber communication. So the questions from optical fiber communication is very very important. I request you to answer this one in the comment section. 25th question what they are given is the MOSFET differs from JFET because of the characteristics yes it differs the MOSFET is not having two gates JFETs will be having two gates JFET as PN junction no it is having multiple junctions and fourth statement what they are given is because of the physical radius size up to some extent you can tell so the corresponding option that is followed is option C is correct physical size depends on the technology what you are going to use 26th question match the following what they are given is on the list one they have given NP we know that mass action law NP equals to NI square for JFET in the case of VGS it is 2 divided by mod VP where VP stands for pinch of voltage into under root of IDS stands for drain to source current and IDS stands for drain to source saturation current in the case of enhancement MOSFET in the case of saturation region ID is given by K nothing but mu and C ox W by L into VGS minus VTH the whole square whole divided by 2 and in the case of P and diode the resistance is of the order of 26 milli ohm so the suitable option that is going to follow is option C is correct 27th question again match the following so on the list one they have given n parameters n parameters means it is a function of a Q point and differentiator means we know output varies as the slope of the input voltage half wave rectifier is for series diode clipper and integrator for noise division and integrator for noise division mainly you, you need to remember this one half wave rectifier for series diode clipper able to follow so the suitable option that is going to follow is option a is correct 28 question again match the following on the list one they have given voltage shunt negative feedback we know that we will be having four types of amplifier the first one is voltage amplifier current amplifier and we will be having trans resistance amplifier and the fourth configuration is trans conductance amplifier so you need to talk about input impedance also you need to talk about output impedance in the case of voltage amplifier or voltage series negative feedback your input impedance will be of infinite value or very high value output impedance ideally it is zero in the case of current amplifier input impedance is zero and output impedance is of the order of mega ohms or infinite 
and in the case of trans resistance amplifier both your input impedance as well as output impedance is zero in the case of trans conductance amplifier your output impedance and input impedance is infinite so they have given voltage shunt negative feedback voltage corresponds to output at the output you are having voltage and at the input shunt correction means you are having current so what is voltage divided by current which is trans resistance so in the case of trans resistance both your input impedance as well as output impedance is zero nothing but voltage shunt negative feedback corresponds to decrease of output impedance let us talk about constant current source differential amplifier it is increase of cmrr phase shift oscillator phase shift oscillator means it is output voltage attenuated by a factor of 1 divided by 29 this is very very important in the case of rc phase shift oscillator the factor is 1 divided by 29 in the case of pll it is fsk detector so the suitable well option that is going to follow is option b is correct moving on to 29 question what they have given is on the list one they have given i square l logic high impedance state controlled inverter and emitter coupled logic we know that emitter coupled logic will be non saturation logic nothing but ecl is going to operate in cutoff region as well as linear region in the case of i impedance inverter or i impedance state it is tri state so whenever your cmos is in tri state nothing but your output will be having an i impedance nothing but there is no any direct connection between your input as well as output one simple example is whenever you are putting your system into sleep mode or hibernation mode the power consumption will be drastically reduced that is because of this tri state i square l logic corresponds to bipolar logic and controlled inverter controlled inverter corresponds to xor so you are going to control the inverter action right so the suitable option that is going to follow is option d is correct 30th question 8086 8051 8279 8085 they have given microcontrollers or microprocessor this one is 8086 microprocessor so you will be having both minimum mode and maximum mode in the case of 8051 microcontroller the RAM size will be 128 byte RAM and the ROM size will be 4 KB of ROM. So this 8279 is a 2 key lockout and 8085 is 3 chip configuration. So the suitable option that is going to follow is option C is correct. 31st question match the following associativity. It is for operators with equal precedence. Say suppose less operator will be there and minus operator will be there at the time these two should be given equal priority and if you are having multiplication division and modulus these three will be having equal priority at that time you will be going with left associativity or right associativity this is very very important in the case of as defined it is define operator auto is for memory storage nothing but dynamic memory allocation conditional operator is if then else so the suitable option that is going to follow is option b is correct we want to third second question uh, this question is from analog communication so they have given dsbse nothing but double sideband suppressed carrier single sideband modulation am demodulation and phase shift detection so what is the detector circuit you are going to use in the case of am demodulation we know that we are going to make use of envelope detector it is the simplest demodulator circuit that is available so in the case of am demodulation the first one is synchronous detector and the second one is envelope detector and the third one is square law demodulator so in the case of dsbsc we will be making use of balanced modulator and ssb one demodulation technique is viewers method and am demodulation we know that we are going to make use of envelope detector and in the case of phase shift detection we will be making use of faster CLA discriminator able to follow so in the case of demodulation of am we will be having square law detector envelope detector and synchronous detector in the case of generation of dsb we are going to make use of balance modulator or product modulator and the second type is ring modulator in the case of ssd we will be having frequency discriminator method or filter method and the second one is phase discriminator and the third method is third method or weavers method so in the case of demodulation of fm we will be having two variants the first one is frequency discriminator and the second one is phase discriminator in the case of phase discriminator again we will be having faster CLA discriminator and the second one is ratio detector you should be in a position to remember all these things so the suitable option that is going to follow is option b is correct 
Moving on to 33rd question, what they have given is snubber circuit inverter phase control SMPS. On the right side, they have given silicon control rectifier, high efficiency DV by DT protection, unijunction transistor. We know that in the case of snubber circuit, it is for DV by DT protection. And inverter, we are going to make use of SCR, nothing but silicon control rectifier. Phase control is for UJT, nothing but unijunction transistor. Here, you will be having negative resistance. It will be acting like an oscillator also. These things are very, very important. SMPS, we are going to make use in, in CPU in order to regulate the power supply. So, the efficiency of SMPS will be uh, high value. So, the option that is going to follow is option A is correct. 34th question. On the list one, they have given Miller sweep in cathode ray oscilloscope. Study of transients is transient response. Cocktox sound and lysargeous pattern. On the list, they have given storage oscilloscope, integrator, phase measurement and blood pressure. We know that in the case of Cortox sound, it is used for blood pressure measurement. Lysargeous pattern is for phase measurement. So, if you have studied with instrumentation, this topic is very, very important in the case of CROs. And study of transients is done with the help of storage oscilloscope. Miller sweep in CRO is by integrator. So, the suitable option that is going to follow is option C is going to follow. 35th question match the following power efficient transmission, bandwidth most efficient transmission of voice signal, it is SSB. Simplest receiver, we know that envelope detector in the case of AM and bandwidth efficient transmission of signal with a significant DC component. This is very, very important and this is for vestigial sideband modulation and power efficient transmission is for frequency modulation. So, the option that is going to follow is option B is correct. That sixth question what they have given is MOS integrated ICs based on MOSFET structure find wide application in digital field. This statement is true. What the reason they are telling is MOS integrated ICs have smaller in size and easy to fabricate. Even this statement is also true but reason is also giving the proper explanation for assertion. So, how to opt for option A. That seventh question what they have given is the series pass transistor is a regulator in class A mode. True. Class A is a switching mode and yields high efficiency. Class A will not be having high efficiency. Class B and class C will be having high efficiency when compared to class A. So, only assertion is correct but reason is false. So, I need to opt for option C. 38th question what they are given is the most commonly used amplifier in Sample and hold circuit is unity gain non inverting amplifier. It's a true statement. At the sampling state, signal building is not desired. Yes. So, the suitable option that is going to follow is option A is correct. 39th question In some application, it is required to delay pulse train by number of by some number of clock periods. Yes, you have to delay, make a delay. For delay operation, serial in parallel shift registers is used, but you can make use of other logics also, but it is not giving the proper explanation for assertion. So, I need to opt for option B. 40th question, interfacing is a technique to make operation of peripheral or input output devices compatible with that of microprocessor. Yes, some peripherals and input output devices are not TTL compatible. This is very, very important. If you are making each and everything TTL compatible, then cost of the circuit will be going high. So, the option that is going to follow is option A is correct. Here, you need to focus on not TTL compatible. 41st question, C uses many data types such as integer, short, long, etc. Even string also it is going to use. What the reason they are specifying is conversion specifier used for short integer is percentage LU is wrong. So, you need to opt for option C. For the second question, what they have given is the two types of optical sources used in transmission of optical communication links are LED and laser is correct. Lasers are costly, they are telling, yes, and hence not preferred for small distance, low cost system. It, even this is also a true statement, but reason is not giving the proper explanation for assertion. Lasers will be used in optical fiber communication where very much accurate or monochromaticity is very much required. 
where losses should be as less as possible at that time you are going to make use of lasers main thing is you should know what is the difference between lasers and led in the case of lasers it is highly coherent it obeys the principle of stimulated emission whereas leds will be having spontaneous emission this is very very important 43rd question in applications such as frequency modulation and frequency shift keying we are going to make use of voltage controlled oscillator which is going to play an important role yes this statement is a true statement how you are going to tune the frequency is you will be having two inductors l1 and l2 and you will be having a capacitor so this will be my tank circuit across this what you are going to do is you are going to connect a varactor diode across this one you are going to apply m of t so with respect to m of t my capacitance is going to change effective capacitance is going to change thereby frequency is also going to vary what is the frequency f equals to 1 divided by 2 pi root lc where l equals to l1 plus l2 and c is capacitance are connected in parallel that is c and c prime so equivalent capacitance is c plus c prime so what reason they are specifying is the frequency control is easily possible by varying dc voltage this statement is also a true case so i need to opt for option a 44th question what they have given is scr and scs belong to thyristor category yes in the case of thyristor not only scr you will be having track dac all those things even gto will also be there so all these things comes under thyristor family what the reason they are telling is what distinguishes scs from scr is that scs is a two gate device this statement is a true statement so option a is going to follow for the fifth question oscilloscope provide graphical representation of time varying signals this statement is true bandwidth is the limitation of oscilloscope bandwidth is not the limitation of oscilloscope so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option c is correct 46th to 50th question is based on optical fiber communication so in the case of optical fiber cable you need to talk about the critical angle also you need to talk about numerical aperture all those things are very very important 46th question what they have given is a multi mode step index fiber as core refractive index of 1.5 and fused quartz cladding the cladding refractive index they have given 1.46 they are asking us to find what is the acceptance angle we know that what is the formula in order to find acceptance angle we know that sin of theta c which is equals to under root of n1 square minus n2 square nothing but theta c which is equals to sin inverse of under root of what is n1 square it is 1.5 square minus what is n2 square it is 1.46 square which is equals to 20.16 which is equals to 20.16 degree so the option that is going to follow is option a is correct 47th question following is not the usual characteristics of an optical fiber the optical fiber cable can be classified into single mode step index multi mode step index multi mode graded index also but it is not classified as single mode graded index so the suitable option that's going to follow is option b is correct 48 question when atoms in direct band semiconductors move from higher energy level to lower energy level and emission of light takes place the energy of the emitted photon is given as h nu 12 which is equals to e2 minus e1 nothing but if the electron is jumping from higher energy level say e2 to lower energy level that is e1 the emitted energy will be the difference of this band gap so the suitable option that is going to follow is option a moving on to 49th question what they have given is which of the following are the cases of signal attenuation first statement what they have given is splicing intermodal delay third segment what they have given is scattering and fourth one is chromatic dispersion we know that in the case of signal attenuation the major problem is intermodal delay and chromatic dispersion hence the suitable option that is going to follow is option d is correct 50th question the following are correct about a semiconductor laser we know that laser is highly coherent nothing but monochromatic laser obeys stimulated emission and population inversion so based on this theory let us answer this last question 
it provides population inversion this statement is true it has shorter lifetime than led even this statement is also true it demonstrate spontaneous emission it demonstrates stimulated emission so statement c is wrong first statement what they are given is it generate monochromatic incoherent light it generates monochromatic coherent light hence statement 3 and statement 4 is false so option a is going to follow in this video we have discussed 50 questions to solve more and more question paper please like this video share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel craving gan pdf solutions will be provided on my telegram group so please join my telegram group also thank you all the best for your exams